affected by the birth of the royal baby. Prince George Alexander Louis arrived in the world on Tuesday afternoon. As heir to the throne, can he expect to have his every life stage documented and reported on? I rather suspect the answer to that one is yes. But when he eventually does become king, will he become the defender of the Christian faith? Or will that phrase, and perhaps all it implies, have become a relic of the past by that time? The title was originally given to King Henry VIII, and the monarch remains as the supreme governor of the Church of England. Well, joining us now to uh, discuss the matter is uh, Mal Fletcher, who's a social commentator and a futurist. Good morning. Good morning, Jonathan. Um, so, what are your thoughts? Will baby Prince George, will he be de defender of uh, the Christian faith by the time that uh, he comes to uh, to take the throne? Yes, well, it is a long way off, isn't it? The, the Times reported this week he might not become king until around 2068, so it's, it's difficult to predict anything about his reign this far out, but I think there's every possibility he may retain the, retain the title. If you consider that on a global scale now, demographic studies are suggesting that over the next 10 or 15 years, the process of secularisation we've seen in Europe will actually be in decline in most of the world and religion including Christianity will be on the rise. Um, closer to home we've got the C of E now continuing on a new social renewal path under its archbishop uh, trying to become a social voice again. We've got the Catholic Church you mentioned under Pope Francis with his emphasis on the poor so whatever one's views on these and other religious groups it's hard to argue against the social uh, enterprise side of it. Uh, uh, we've, I'm looking at the Comres uh, survey this morning. It's uh, splashed over some parts of the newspapers uh, this morning there's a, an element conducted uh, by the BBC revealing that two-thirds of people believe that Her Majesty the Queen should certainly hang on to the title, but 50% I see agreed that Prince Charles should change the title to uh, Defender of Faith, as in faiths plural. Does that indicate that the, the monarch's personal faith is, is going to be quite significant when it comes to whether or not that title is, is used or not? Well, of course it has a part to play, and faith is an intensely personal thing. If Prince George has either a personal faith experience, as his great grandmother clearly does, or he has a positive experience with people of faith, he may feel inclined to lend his support in very overt ways. Uh, of course, ours is a constitutional monarchy, so his, if you like, professional preferences would still be constrained to a degree by public opinion, and when it comes to that, we shouldn't underestimate things like social upheaval, rapid change, and globalisation in shifting public perception. Does a Christian faith go with the territory, do you think, of uh, the monarchy of this country? I mean, Her Majesty the Queen has been uh, very vocal about her personal Christian faith in, in recent times, particularly in the, the Christmas broadcasts. Do you think that will leave a, a legacy for her great-grandson? I think it may well do. I think every culture carries something of its historical cult, and I use that word in its anthropological sense to mean the, the core worldview or system of belief that plays a central role in the culture's formation. And as you say, the Queen has suggested in certain speeches that you know our culture is largely a part of a distinctive worldview, a Judeo-Christian worldview. And we may not be as institutionally religious as we once were in this country, but we've got even Richard Dawkins claiming to be a, quote, cultural Christian. <laughs> <laughs> He's thankful for at least some of the culture cultural trimmings of Christianity, he says. And I think a lot of people might share that view. If religion provides a context, it provides a foundation for cultural values, and in times of rapid change, that becomes very important. We're seeing huge changes. I mean, we have seen huge changes, and doubtless they're going to continue. The process of globalisation, um, migration and immigration as, as people move around the world. Is that going to have, do you think, um, an impact on the, the future role of the monarch of this, this country, which is already a very, very different country to the one that uh, the Queen started to rule um, all those years ago and uh, undoubtedly will be extremely different by the time young Prince George comes to the throne. Yes, and today we have multicultural policies, we have global trade, new technologies, all leading us toward a greater global awareness and connectedness. But at the same time, I think, we can expect to see people becoming more curious about what makes their culture unique. Um, globalism actually gives rise to a corresponding increase in positive forms of tribalism in which people look for the distinctives in their own particular culture and the roots of those distinctives, including their religious roots. So I think the monarchy and its role with religion will be uh, obviously fluid over the next 20, 30, 40 years, but I don't see it becoming massively uh, uprooted. Mal, we shall leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on the programme this morning. Uh, Mal Fletcher, social commentator and futurist.